All right. Good morning, everybody. So I'm starting this vlog like into my day a little bit already. Um, it's about 10 o'clock and I'm about ready to see my first client for the day. Um, I have a fitting day today for about four appointments and I'm going to do some sewing after that. Um, I've already started my day off with some breakfast, an energy drink, a shower, all that good stuff. And I was like, should I vlog today? And I didn't feel like recording it, just didn't. <laughs> so I'm starting here um, because I'm already at my shop. Um, my first client just dropped something off already, so I'm sitting down to organize. I remembered to actually bring extra paper pads to keep on my shelf because the last time, well, one of the last times I was here, I forgot paper and I had to write my contracts down on, I don't even wanna tell you what I wrote them down. It's embarrassing. Uh, we've had some new moments lately in my life where I've been super disorganized and I need to nip that in the bud. So step one, bring extra paper just to leave it here. So that way I don't have to worry about bringing it with me if I've forgotten it or something like that. Um, I have my appointments written down for today. One, two, three. I have a fitting, a consult, and a um, same day, which I don't do a lot of same day anymore. And I wanted to talk about that for just a second. So my same day appointment is a um, gal that I've already done work for and she has a daughter uh, making her quinceanera who needs her slit sewn up on the, the leg split is just a little too high. So I brought my thread colors to match and I'm gonna hand sew it up for her while we're here. My hand sewing is obviously very sturdy so I'm not worried about that. I just figured she might like to have it, you know, to take home. So I'm gonna have them sit and wait, you know, while I sew by hand and we'll chat it out and just have a nice little visit. And that way she can take it home with her today. Um, I don't do a lot of same day work for people just because my life doesn't do that <laughs> right now. Um, when I worked at dry cleaners as a teenager, um, we did a lot of same day stuff and it was usually like you bring it in in the morning and you can pick it up in the night. Sometimes people would sit and wait for like a pant hem or something um, that was small or simple. Um, we would get emergency people that would come in that would have like their seat ripped out of their pants and they'd go stand in the dressing room in their drawers and wait for me to sew it so that way they could wear their pants back out like stuff like that would happen um, obviously I don't, I don't get that kind of stuff anymore but like you just see different types of clients when you work at a dry cleaner there's all different kinds of wackadoodle scenarios that people bring to you um, I definitely get way a lot less of those now but um, two of them today are kind of like short time frame is my fitting is for a bridesmaid and I don't take a lot of bridesmaids but again for like existing clients that I've already had um I do a little bit more flexibility on you know what I take just because I already know them the like processing of you know their I don't know how to ex explain it but like a new customer takes longer to talk to than an existing one so the process goes a little bit smoother and quicker and all that stuff they already know how my policies work and all that stuff so it goes a little bit smoother um, and then my consult should be a lot of fun. I do free consults for my brides just so that way I can see the scope of work and see if I'm a good fit for them. Now I've already looked at her dress in photos. Um, and I asked her if she had a budget cause she already has been quoted somewhere else that was, and was too high for her. And I did agree with the price that they gave her. Um, so I asked her what her budget is and it's a workable budget, but I just told her that I might not be able to give her all of the things that she's looking for for that price. So what I'm going to do today is determine if I can get enough of a fit done to give her a good, a good overall result for the price that she wants to spend. We'll see. Um, working with budgets is definitely something that I've done a lot in the past. I haven't done it a lot lately as far as, um, you know, trying to hit a certain number for somebody, but um, I'm excited to do that just because... Um, it's a fun dress that she has and, um, yeah, it should be a good time just taking a look at it and stuff. It is a very large dress on her, so it needs a full, like, probably two sizes worth of taken, um, hem and a bustle. So I'm really hoping that I can do something for her that's going to make an impact on the fit for the price that she's willing to spend. I love that she's already been, like, budgeting and she knows, like, what she's spending on things. Um, I think that's, um, I don't know, that's kind of how I would think. I like to look ahead and plan so that way I'm not surprised at the end. So I'm excited to meet her. I hope we vibe. If not, I'll help her find somebody um, that might be able to do kind of what I'm doing, like to meet her budget and just maybe give her a little bit less items, but still a good look on the fit. But yeah, that's kind of what's on my day plan. Um, I definitely have goals to take a break for some lunch. 
Um, I was sewing all day yesterday and I am exhausted. And I still have more sewing to do. Um, I have a lot of dresses that are being taken up at the waist right now, like to shorten the waist. And those are really exhausting. <laughs> They're not hard per se, but they, you know, putting everything back nicely by hand and making sure everything is smooth. Um, takes a lot out of you. It's You're looking for perfection and it's a lot to ask of your eyes and your fingers and your body and all that stuff. So I'm hoping to kind of take it easy a little bit today and having conversations with people always makes me feel nice. So I'm going to quit yakking for now. I'm going to clean the mirrors off, run the vacuum around to get the glitter off the floor and I'll check back in with you when I'm done. So my next client is running a little behind, so I thought I would prep this um, shirt hem that I'm going to be doing. Now this was a referral client from another one of mine, and super sweet gal. Both well, both gals are super sweet, but my client who referred me to her is one that I've been doing for like 12 years. <laughs> I really need to ask her how long it's been because it's been oh so long. I've done tons of stuff for her over the years. Um, personal and professional stuff. She's also a fellow business lady who does um, craft classes. She's really awesome. So these shirts, uh, she asked if I could get these hemmed for her mom. And um, I offered to mail them too because this one is for St. Patrick's Day, which is just around the corner. And I figured that might help her, um, you know, just take something off her plate. I've learned more and more how um, nice it is when somebody takes something off your plate. And if I can do that for somebody else, then I am going to because that's valuable. So we kind of figured out what length she wants these. And I asked her if she wanted this, you know, the Oxford cut, the rounded. And she said, no, just to go straight. So I'm going to do that. This looks nice and even. Figure I could at least get this prepped while I'm waiting, which is awesome. Um, this is my like kid free time, which is really nice because then I can actually focus and I'll be able to run these through the sewing machine at home in no time. Okay, looks good. I'm gonna give this a choppity chop. I do miss doing standard alterations every so often because like, you know, easy, quick, stuff like that, but um, like I was saying, it's, it takes a long time to talk to a new customer. Um, and so it doesn't always add up to as much profitability just for my life now. Um, maybe someday I'll get back there. Who knows? You never know what life is going to bring. Okay, so that fitting is done. We had a great little catch up chat. I hadn't seen her since like Christmas. So we were just filling each other in with all our life updates and all that fun stuff. I'm getting ready for my consultation right now. 
and I'm just setting up my sheet for notes. Um, I do a notes sheet that I will send a copy to the bride when we're all done with my estimate and all that good stuff. Um, if she wants to get started on any of this today, um, which I think I could probably start the take in, um, I can pin that, but it's a lot of a take in to where I would uh, do the body fitting first and then have her come back for the hem anyways. Um, since I have another appointment behind her, I can't do a full fitting right now, um, but I could at least get that started if she likes the numbers. Um, I've got to write down her event date. I like to just have it all fresh on one place instead of scrolling through all the messages and all that stuff. Um, it's important to put their last name too. I've had a lot of Ashleys this year. And also I've had some last names that were the same. I have two brides with the same last name right now. And I'm like, got to read everything and make sure that I'm correct. Okay, so we're going to get all set up for that. She should be here in a few minutes, so we'll see how that one goes. If I can record a little bit of it, I will. And if not, I'll just uh, see you for my hand sewing, which is coming next. <sighs> okay, so I am now taking a seat to um, relax. I just finished my last appointment. My consultation went great. She was super lovely. I can definitely work within her budget. Um, and she went ahead and had me pin for phase one. So exciting. Um, her mom was super lovely, came with her and gave some feedback on the fitting. And I am super excited. She's an early June bride. And I love when brides come this early for a consult just to, you know, see if we match up vibe wise and to see if, you know, the, it's a good fit for us personality wise um, to get the work done. So I'm really, really excited about that one. And then my same day came in and we got her all handled. The slit on her dress was really really high I thought it was just like you know everybody's got a different comfort level I thought it was just like a little bit too high like maybe two or three inches of sewing to do this was a full like she was wearing bike shorts under it you could see the bike shorts by like four inches this was a full slit that was just so so high I, I joked and I was like did this come with booty shorts or something like I genuinely think it should have had some drawers with it because it was I'm not a prude or anything but like this slit was insane I don't even know what anyone was thinking when they made this dress design because yeah um so I got that pinned and sewed on her while we had a chat and then she got to take it right home with her so that was really exciting um I like that feeling of being able to help somebody and get them on their day and um oh I'm tired <laughs> uh I love talking with people but it definitely makes your brain exhausted so I'm going to get everything packed up I got both shirt hems cut and pinned from my first client this morning so I'm gonna take those home and get those sewed and then out in the mail I'm gonna pack up the dresses that I fitted today and take those home um, I definitely need some lunch. I am a starving and some water and all that good stuff. So I will pack up and head home and then, um, maybe we'll see some footage of my lunch. I don't know. Otherwise we'll be back in the sewing room next. Oh, and I totally forgot one of my bride's moms made me some cookies and I'm totally going to eat these right now in the car on the way home. <laughs> Okay, so I am back home now. We ate our lunch. It was really delicious and we played with some cars and I suffered some hair loss during the cars incident. Uh, I'm going to take a nap to refresh myself. Um, I used to be able to power nap for 15 minutes and now I need, I definitely need 25 now instead of 15. Um, but I can refresh and then get up and start sewing. 
uh, before we have dinner, which will be awesome. It'll be nice to get outside. It was a really pretty day out. It's like lightly windy and um, it's really beautiful out. So I definitely could use some fresh air today. All right. Well, I'm going to nap and then I will see you back in the sewing room. Awesome. I just got these sewn up, so I'm going to go press these out. I'm going to sit down and organize my workload for the rest of the night. So currently I am deep within the uh, cavernous center of a wedding dress and whenever brides are like, can you please send me progress photos, I'm like, no, there's really nothing that you would gain from seeing this moment. It's, I, <laughs> I find a nice way to explain that, um, that I don't do progress shots because I don't have time to like take it off the machine and put on the mannequin and like flip it right side out in the middle of while I'm working and like this shot wouldn't really tell them anything other than yep I'm working on it um, but right now I'm in one of those spots where I am in the waist 
in the side scene working on so much stuff that like you almost kind of forget where you're at and I often wish it'd be so cool to have like a you are here in the dress where it tells you exactly where you're located um you know how that is when you're in a dress with like a lot of layers and um like you can't get into all of them from the bottom so you're kind of like in one section to get to one layer and you need to go up into another section to get into another part <sighs> good good times so so good this one's not terrible but you definitely have to keep your wits about you i've done a lot of like prep steps to get to where i am on here um you know where you work on it in a chunk you're like okay i'm gonna get the lace picked up okay i'm gonna transfer my pins okay i'm going to you know you just kind of work on it in some chunks because it's just it's a lot to do all at one go that's definitely been the stress and the sewing part is not the challenging part because you can see that was maybe what an 18 inch seam but the challenging part is all the transitions and you know all the other bits that have to go back into it to make it be a normal dress in the end but that's why this job is so fun it's all complicated but it's like not so complicated that you can't fix it which is nice okay so the rest of this day has gone pretty decently i really need to sit down and write out um my master list kind of update myself as to where i'm at with all my projects i work on several <laughs> dresses at one time um, based on when they're due and so i don't always remember the status of every dress that i'm working on just because they're in different levels of completion so like for example if i'm not feeling good like um you know you know how you wake up and you're just like not ready to jump into a full like boned corset situation um but you can knock out some hems or whatever um so sometimes i'll work on pieces of different dresses before i do like the complicated steps and i'll save the complicated steps for a day when i have full quiet and full caffeine and all that stuff um, so i want to sit down and make myself a list of like where i'm at with everything i am in progress uh tidying my sewing room it's well i feel like it's always isn't that always a process um, and as you can see from behind me, there's piles forming on the top of my shelves and all kinds of fun stuff going on in here that I need to address. But, you know, I feel like it's the hardest to clean when you know you have 500 things due. So that's hard for me. And then tomorrow morning, I'm going to finally go get my oil changed. I haven't done it. And my car, like, finally alerted saying it's time. So it's like, oopsies. Um... So I'll go do that early in the morning and then I have more so time tomorrow, hopefully. And then we'll be all good. Now this week I have several things due. Several dresses worth and brides things um, due. So I'm really, really excited to have as much sewing time as I've had this weekend. And I cannot wait. Um, April is a little bit slower, but... Um, yeah and not by a ton either and then i booked a lot of june brides um today so i think i'm the, that's part of what i need to like look at and make sure i'm not overbooked because i think i think i'm actually at capacity for june already but i i don't know so i need to look at that um one of my friends recently got a remote assistant and i was like mm, maybe i need that too um it would be really fun just to have somebody to talk to about you know business things and uh, just to like sort things out someone to talk to like a half an hour a day and just be like hey can you help me remember this or write this down or go through emails or whatever it could be really awesome it's on one of my you know someday list i think we're always looking to upgrade things but like when when do you do that you know and i was thinking if I can get this into a good place tonight, I'll just have the hand sewing to do on the side seams in the morning. I like doing hand sewing in the mornings because my eyes are fresh. Everything feels fresh and like you can kind of, it's kind of a slower paced task anyway. So it's kind of nice for morning time when there's quiet and stuff like that, which I really enjoy. Okay, gorgeous.
And then I'm going to trim some of the seam allowance out before I flip it because I might not be able to get back in here as nicely as I am right now. I do still leave, I leave like whatever the manufacturer had left, like the same amount, but I definitely will cut out whatever is left over because I don't want a bunch of extra fabric folding up in there looking like a Twizzler in the dress. Because chances are they're never going to go back up to the same width that it was before. Now, that's not a hard and fast rule I have. I had some people need the dress let completely out. But this one will be in the way for sure. This is a mermaid style dress and it will be way too thick and chunky. And then on the part where the skirt goes back on at the knee, um, there's two designations that I'll write down when a bride is getting um, this taken in at the knee. I'll either write taper the skirt or gather back on and the difference between those two um, obviously isn't the name of the description but um, I could either taper this fabric out to match or I can just gather it and then flatten it back into place and that's what I'm gonna do on this one I had asked her what her preference was and she liked the volume and the fluffiness and so we're not gonna lose any of that now the trick though is to open it like an inch and a half further past on each side otherwise it's going to be really really thick and weird looking and i just go in with the hand needle and the seam allowance a little running stitch gather this bad boy just like that and there's a big juicy piece of applique that covers all this when we're done so any transition that I do on the outside is going to blend just fine because Anna's getting covered. Obviously, you still want to do a nice job, but, um, you know, it's, it's going to be covered by something. So you can do a nice job, but it's not going to show. Like, it's, it's not going to look like anything because there's lace going on top. Shrink that up. Do, 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 do. And there we go. Now I can get this under the machine. Ugh, so nice to sit down and actually get to sew. It's amazing how much of our job as a bridal seamstress isn't the actual sewing parts. It's the emails, the phone calls, the fittings, um, all of the other stuff. I always joked and said it was like 30% of this job is sewing, but like, I don't think that's wrong. I'm pretty sure <laughs> that's pretty close to accurate. I'm going to be a little careful here because I have a safety pin kind of nearby here. So I use safety pins to hold, whenever I have to lift lace to take in the side seams, I'll use safety pins to hold the lace back so that I know I'm not catching it in anything. There we go. Make sure I sew where I wanted to. And I recently just got this table on my left hand side to help me hold up the dresses. And I sew like this at other shops just fine. So my brain knows this is the right thing to do, but I haven't, I haven't ever splurged and got myself one. And of course it's amazing, but you know, like I knew it was going to work, but I think we all do that thing where we like wait to do the right thing for ourselves and buy ourselves the nice things. And whenever I'm gathering back on here, I back stitch a little bit too, just to like lock everything in place, make myself feel good. Cause I can't get back into the spot super easily later. So I want to make sure it's good. And then not that I'm poor or anything, but I will pull my basting thread out and keep it. <laughs> Does anybody else do that? So I can use that again. Just me? No? Okay. Obviously I can use any thread to base anytime. I just, that's a habit. Do you guys have any weird sewing habits that you've acquired over the years where there's not really necessarily a good rhyme or reason, but that's just like, that's just how you do it. Okay, let's flip this around. Yeah, that looks nice. Beautiful. This is kind of the reason I never wanted to do like full tutorials because like this is, there's like really fine detailed pieces that are just hard to show. But look, and see, you can't really tell what I'm doing from this angle. 
Like if I took a photo to show somebody, they would really have no idea what I was doing right here. To be like, yeah, it looks great. They'd be like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so now I just have the tiniest bit of lace to flap back over. And that's what I use all the pins for. Cause I, it's not the worst when you take a dress in and you realize you've caught some of like the floating appliques. You have to re-flip it inside out and unstitch that part. Unflap it. <laughs> like it's just, ugh. so I did this. For myself many years ago as a favor as a treat to myself and it's basically one of the best things ever to do and then you can just put it back now i'm also going to feel that my seam allowance is spread open in here because that will help this look even flatter so that way when i sew the applique back on i can kind of use it to help hold the seam allowance open inside Obviously, I'm going to press it out too, but um, that'll just, you know, extra details. But I want that shifting around, adding a lot of bulk at the sides. This is a pretty um, bulky dress, though, at the, at the side seams to start with. It's got a lot of leftover lace just chilling. Now, if I have anything here that looks like it needs to get edited, uh, I will trim off some. So fun to see everything like coming together. It's the best. Have you guys ever opened up um, an applique that's from like the manufacturer and you see a hole underneath it? Have you ever seen that? I've never seen that. <laughs> uh, I've seen that tons and it's always weird and I'm like, oh bless that seamstress is hard. She probably had a rough day. I think we've all been there and done that. You know, we work so hard to make no errors ever. But at the end of the day, there are some errors that are never going to show to people. So cut yourself some slack. Um, this job requires a certain level of perfection, but attention to detail and perfection are very different things. So cut yourself some slack. You know, if the manufacturer sold it that way, you can still fall within that same range of goodness now if you see something that's terrible obviously it's nice to fix that because you don't want anything um unsafe or wild you know happening in the dress if you can fix it but holding ourselves to a ridiculous high standard isn't always the healthiest either holding yourself to good standards is important but you know they need to be realistic as well gorgeous and honestly that's not too much this was not like a fully encrusted seam allowance like some are so this one will probably not take too long to put back by hand which is really nice and some people save this step to do when the bride is in front of them so that they can I need some more pins so that they can like wrap the lace around them uh depending on the dress and the time frame i i have done that before it, it is nice um, most of the brides that I work with are in a rush, though. They they don't have time for stuff like that. So um, I try to have everything ready to go for their final, so that way it's ready to take home right then. Um, and if I have a second fitting where I really really need to, there's a couple of dresses um, that I work on regularly that are just so bulky at the sides that you can pin it and get. You can get like a 90% good fit with pinning through all the lace at the side seams, but it is so bulky that if you have a chance to do a second fitting and you can lift the lace off, um, like you can actually pull in another quarter inch. There's a one dress. I don't want, I don't want to call it out. Um, she knows who she is. Um, but there is a particular dress that I have worked on so many times that I know fits better after you've had a chance to lift the lace up. It's just a fact, but it, that means that it takes more time and then you have to have another fitting. So that doesn't always work out to um, the schedule for that particular bride. Yay. Okay. So now that is prepped for hand sewing. I'm going to do the other side as well. This side, I haven't prepped at all. This is how I pinned it and it has a little bit of the lace peeled back, but I'm going to get in there next and do this side 
this one, um, I have the benefit of getting in from the top here because I have to shorten it from the waist. So every so often, I will price things based on whether or not um, it's, well, obviously if something's easy to get into or not is a factor, but if I'm working on an area that lets me get into another area easier, I will let that play a factor in the price. Um, so this one, for example, I knew I was going to shorten the waist. So this was an expensive alteration, but I knew that coming in through the waist meant I'd have an access point that was right where I needed it to be. So that helped, um, help me factor in what time I was going to need. Cause if I was just, I'm not even having this dress. This one is the right length for this bride. Yeah. No problem. So, um, I would have to like bust in through, you know, that back access point. And honestly, that really probably wouldn't give me enough room to work these side seams anyways. So this is what I'm thinking of during the fittings. Um, I try to like foresee what the reality of the take apart of the dress is going to be and, you know, factor that because if she didn't need the waist shortened and she didn't need a hem and I had to work through the back hole, I uh, probably would have charged a little bit more because this would have been um, more difficult. Um, and that's why you got to look at all of the factors all together. Um, that consult that I did earlier, I was talking to the mom and the daughter about the, um, about the hem and what we we're going to do on it. Cause it's a, it's a mermaid and she's a very shorter, very short petite bride. And there's a couple ways that I can do it as long as they like the finish. And I was explaining that once you lift, um, at the knee, the applique gets really close to like touching the line at the knee and she goes oh I really like that actually so I was like perfect um, so instead of moving eight inch lace trim at the bottom I can move the knee and that's gonna help play a factor in a good price for the hem um, because that's gonna mean that's I'm gonna save time there and I'm gonna get a better result so when people want to quote on something I just I'll quote them as if it's the hardest uh, and if they come in and it's a lot easier to do, or if there's a better approach, then I'll just, I just price it as what's in front of me and, you know, let them be delighted because uh, I'm delighted too. <laughs> I also don't want to have to move a whole row of eight inch trim. So very happy to do like a 24 inch section of, you know, knee lift and applique. That sounds much better. Now, granted it still takes time, but it's, I don't know. You you know what I'm talking about. It's a lot. It's the trade-off is is very clearly awesome compared to lifting up all the lace at the bottom. <sighs> this is so nice. I had somebody who was asking me this week um, if my job is hard, and honestly, the aspects of being a seamstress that are hard are like the business angles and like communicating with your clients and making sure you guys are on the same page. Sewing, not hard at all. Sewing is enjoyable. Everything right now in this space is under my complete control. How gorgeous is that? Um, there are really no other areas in life where I think many of us seamstresses feel like we are in charge of anything to its entirety. And behind the sewing machine, I am 100% for the most part in charge of what happens here these decisions. I am not being micromanaged right now. I'm not asking the bride for a million bits of uh, permission. Um, I'm seeing what I need to do at each turn and being able to apply my knowledge to it. So it feels really good. It feels nice to be in an area where you have confidence and even if something's difficult, you know, you're going to get through it. You know, even if that happens,
Okay, and now that I have my shirts ready um, to ship, I got them folded down to the size that will fit in this envelope. I think I'm going to wrap them with some fun paper and some washi tape. Just for fun. When I was a kid, I always wanted to work in a department store wrapping gifts. I thought that was like a real job that you could have, like a career. <laughs> I didn't realize it wasn't a career choice. But I still love wrapping presents to this day. It's my favorite. Isn't that the way that it goes? The minute you push record to film any part of your life, a simple task takes four times longer. <laughs> there we go. And I'm going to write her address on this before I stuff this in. This will definitely fit once I get it um, compressed, but I definitely will be able to write on this. So I'm going to do that off camera and then I think I'm going to throw in some wash before I go to sleep. It's about bedtime. getting a chance to sit down I am noticed that I am covered in glitter it's been a glitter gown day whoopsie it's always funny to me when I sew glitter dresses and then like the next day I'm doing laundry because it basically just like washes more glitter into all of our clothes but that's fine I'm sure it's all biodegradable right all right so it is fully the next day I recorded the outro to my vlog uh last night right before I went to bed and it was garbage and I was so tired that words just did not come out so instead of using that which is terrible I'm gonna say goodbye to you today <laughs> so that way I have a coherent message at the end of my vlog I don't vlog very often so I wanted to have something nice at the end and this isn't nice but it's nicer than the ones I recorded last night so thank you guys for watching and finding any part of this interesting um, my normal content isn't vlogs though. My normal content is um, business related topics having to do with sewing and the bridal industry. And that's what I like to talk about because not enough people talk about it. And I feel like it's um, the difficult part of running a business is like client management and getting your schedule in order and all that stuff. So that's my favorite stuff to talk about. So if you're interested in anything like that, um, feel free to subscribe. I don't have a set content schedule right now. Um, so you'll just have to put the notification bell on so that way you can see what I post when I post it. And I hope you guys have a great day or night wherever you are. And I will see you in my next video.